I am Sarah from Homespun Childhood, and today we are going to talk about Spellography, which is a very unique spelling program for struggling spellers who are older students, which is a very unique spelling program for older students like fourth grade and up who are also struggling with spelling. So let's dive in. Hey folks, I'm Sarah from Homespun Childhood. I am a former teacher turned homeschool mom, literacy specialist, and homeschool consultant. And here at Homespun Childhood, I share all things curriculum, literacy, planning, books, and more. Today, we're going to look at the re-release of Spellography by Louisa Motes and Bruce Rosso and talk about who this program is for and who it is not for, because this is for a very specific group of students. So Spellography has been around for quite a while. You can find the old version copies on Amazon and eBay, etc. Sometimes they're hard to find and in not very good shape. So I was very excited to see that they re-released this um, in this brand new, like, full color uh, set. Right now, levels A and B are available. Level C will be available at some point. Um, they did release these like one per year. So it was this one and then B was released, I think this fall. So hopefully C will be coming soon. So this program includes two components. We have the teacher lesson book and the student book. Unfortunately, you do need both of them. I say unfortunately because as we look through these, you'll notice the text is virtually the same in the student book as it is in the teacher book. You have the answers included in the teacher book, but you also have the words that you need for dictation. So without the teacher book, you do not get any of the dictation words for those activities. Now, could you figure out some words that go with the spelling pattern? Sure. That said, I do think you need both. Um, and they are kind of pricey. The student books are about 40 and the teacher guide is like 65. So you're looking at a little over hundred for the whole set. So let's dive in. I say this program is really different because this is not like any other spelling program you have seen before. Um, it goes into the background of the authors here. So Louisa Motes is like the guru of the science of reading community. She um, is very big out there. And so just having her name on this alone, um, and I'm sure Bruce Rossow is the same, um, speaks volumes for the content and quality of this program. So we start with a timeline of the English language, and it's talking about the spelling of English and how it is often explained through history. So we're going to dive immediately into morphology and how that impacts our spelling today. You know, a lot of folks say, oh, spelling, you know, in English is so hard. There's so many rules and so many exceptions. When we actually dive into kind of the history of our words and their spellings, it makes a lot more sense. And that's what this program is all about. Then we jump into the table of contents. This um, program is divided into six units and each of these units goes over some different spelling rules. Okay, welcome to Spellography. What is this program? Um, just diving into a little bit of that, I do want to point out that this program, who is this designed for, is not for your average student, okay? This program is designed especially for the following. Intermediate or older students, so grades three through five, who may have been introduced to spelling and language concepts, but need additional practice to transfer their spelling knowledge to writing, and students who read better than they spell average readers who are weak spellers. This is not appropriate for students who spell below a third grade level or who have severe learning disabilities, okay? This program is not for everyone. This is for our older students who are struggling with spelling but have the reading stuff down. There is a lot of reading involved in this program. So how is it designed? We have a overview here of kind of the layer cake, as they say, that makes up the language, English language system. We're going to break it down into syntax, morphology, orthography, and phonology. You're going to find grammar and word study and phonemic awareness are all embedded in this program because they have a huge impact on our spelling, especially for struggling spellers. There are going to be four books altogether. We have books A and book B available right now. And so they're saying about 12 to 16 weeks per book. So I would say you could use book books A and B for a year long program. Okay. What does the teacher need to know about this program? Talking a little bit more about um, speech to print, which is a great book. I highly recommend. I'll link that in the bottom and the letters training. And then they're going to break this down into the layers of language. They're going to talk about phonology, orthography, morphology and etymology, syntax. 
Okay, these are the different systems that impact how we spell and relate to language. If you are not familiar with these, if you're a homeschooling parent, this language is all new to you, they have you covered. They're gonna break this down step by step, okay? Talk about the vowel valley and the consonant chart. We're gonna dive in more about the different sound letter correspondences. We're gonna talk about the different types of activities that are in this book. So each unit is broken up into these different activities. We're gonna have phoneme, grapheme, matching. So that's when we're talking about matching the sound so that we hear in words to the letter or letters that represent them. So for example, cat, we hear three sounds, k, at, and we have three letters, c, a, t. Other words, we have three sounds like fish, f, i, sh, but we have four letters because the sh is saying sh, sound. So we're going to be mapping the sounds we hear to the letters that represent those. We have word completion activities. We have word sorting. We have speed reading. We have dictation. And then we have examining the morphology and etymology, looking at those meaningful word parts. This is especially important for our students who are in third grade and up where we are experiencing longer words. And often these words are made up of word parts. And then we're gonna dive into syntax a little bit. I love that they include these in here. This really is a complete program that's going to tackle all the different areas that could lead a child to struggle with spelling even though they are a solid reader. Then we have a summary of the different units and breaking down each unit and their lessons into these different parts or the layers as they describe them. So this book is going to dive into the following topics, okay? We're gonna have unit one where they are considering the history of English and we're gonna be looking at the sounds and the syntax. Then we have unit two, where we're going to be looking at initial blends. We're going to be thinking about how we use compound words, especially the Anglo-Saxon layer. Unit three is Jealous King Fred. We're gonna be talking about the rules for syllables. Every syllable has to have a vowel. We're gonna look at different vowel sounds, and we're gonna look at final consonants that include complex consonants. So X, C, K, and G, T, H, C, and D, G, E and final blends. We're also going to look at doubling consonants. So you notice this is moving through a lot of different concepts at once. This is not going to be week one, we're going to do TCH. Week two, we're going to do DGE. It's not like that. This is a really like a big, broad approach. So again, this is developed for students who have already had exposure to these rules. They just didn't stick. And now they're third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, and they're still struggling with spelling, even though they're solid readers. So we're going to end unit four. We're going to dive into the different ways to spell the K sound based off of where we hear that sound in the word. We're going to look at the silent E pattern. We're going to look at the past tense ED and how we spell that because ED has three sounds even though it's always spelled the same. And we're going to look at additional syllable patterns. Okay, unit five, we are doing a quiz. It says a quiz and a saxophone. There are many ways to spell the K sound. So again, we're diving more into that. We're also going to look at the Q, U and the K and learn that U could be a chameleon letter and that X has changeable qualities. And we're gonna look at the prefix EX. In the final unit in book A, we are going to be reviewing the J sound and how that is spelled based off of the position in the word. So the beginning of the word, we'll spell it with a J or a soft G. They talk about the rules for that. At the end of the word, it's gonna be spelled D-G-E or G-E based off of the sounds because English cannot end in the letter J. And then we have a little review, okay? So again, this will cover about a semester. So if you are starting out, um, you could do book A and then book B and hope that book C is released you know, within the next six months to year. They have been pretty consistent with their release patterns. So just keep that in mind. So then we're gonna dive into unit one. We have our overview and the different lessons. Here is unit one in the teacher guide. Let me show you what unit one looks like in the student book, okay? So the student book starts very similar with this timeline, and then we're diving into become a spellographer. So here is the student book. Here is the teacher book. The text is the same. The only difference, the teacher book has the answers. Okay? So for that reason, I am going to stick with the teacher guide for this and not be kind of pulling these back and forth. There's a lot of reading in this. This is not a program that would be wise for 
older students who are also struggling with reading. I would hold off on doing this program until you have, you know, really gotten them to be pretty fluent readers and then pull this in. Yes, you can read this to them, but it's just not designed for students who are still really struggling with reading. If you have a student who is struggling with reading, head on over to my blog. I will link that below. I have a whole post on struggling readers that dives into a whole bunch of different things. Okay, so you can see here, just a lot of text, okay? This is a pretty heavy duty workbook. It's gonna take some manipulating to get it to lay flat. Let's look at the first unit. We have an overview. And again, your student is reading this too. This is not just for you. It's kind of this yellow call out box. You have the call out box for your student as well. It's talking about being a spellographer. It has the objective up here. We're gonna talk about growing a garden of words. And then we're gonna start talking about word history. So we have in the teacher's guide, we have the answers over here. These words, are up here in the word bank for the student, but they're not filled in. We also have this call out box that is for the teacher over here in blue. So we're looking at these different words and breaking them down. Okay, we're gonna be matching more words. We're gonna be doing a word origin search, and then we're gonna move on to lesson two. I think, in my opinion, these lessons kind of line up per weeks, right? So you would do one lesson per week and spread out the activities different days. So now we're gonna dive into phonology. We are really explaining to these students why English spelling is tricky and what we can do to tackle that. Okay, we're gonna count phonemes. This is our phonological awareness activity. Over here we have those tips for the teacher talking about pulling in manipulatives to move for the different sounds, count the phonemes, word chaining with just the manipulatives. So we're going lad, so they'd pull and push three sounds, l, ad, with three little circle chips. And then you're gonna switch to lid and they're gonna identify that that middle sound is the one that's changing. If this, all of these activities are really overwhelming for you, I do break these down with examples in my foundational reading instruction course. That'll be linked below. And do a grapheme roundup here. Again, we're thinking about the position of the sounds and then we're matching these or mapping the graphemes that represent those sounds. So thick, we hear th, it, and we're writing the sounds to match those different positions. We're gonna build words. We're gonna review definitions. Then we move into lesson three. We're gonna spell by position. There are 26 letters, but there's 40 phonemes. We're gonna continue with this mapping activity. We're gonna build more words. We're gonna talk about the position. We're gonna define words and we're gonna have our dictation. Okay, and down here we have some directions for the dictation activity. Then we're gonna move into morphemes. We're gonna talk about what morphemes are, that they come from the Anglo-Saxon, Latin, or Greek origin. We're gonna talk about morpheme patterns. We're going to talk about how we don't mix and match Anglo-Saxon morphemes with Greek morphemes. We're gonna break down the words based off of their morphemes, their meaningful parts. We're going to make some words. We're going to do some word sums, okay, where we're mixing and matching the prefixes and suffixes to get words. We're going to do a base race here, underlining the words, the base words, and reading them with fluency. Then we move into lesson five, talking about vowels and the vowel valley. We're going to play with vowel phonemes. We're going to do some vowel substitution. We're gonna sort words by vowel sounds, where we position those sounds in our mouth. And for those of you who are coming from a different approach to teaching reading, um, or this is all kind of new to you, there is a lot of research that teaching students where we like the position of our mouths when we form these different sounds and really being descriptive about that is really helpful for a lot of students. So it might sound very, um, you know, we're using all these terms, kind of teachery terms with students about where, you know, we form these words and we're talking about graphemes and phonemes with our students. That is very research supported, okay? So this is not like we're gonna throw all this terminology at students only from this program. That's in all programs we're looking at now. We're gonna talk about syllables, count and sort syllables, combining syllables. We're gonna work on building sentences. So we're moving into that syntax component. Scrambled sentences here, unscrambling them, talking about parts of speech in a meaningful way. And then we have our review for students. We're going to play with phonemes a little bit more in our review, review the graphemes, build words. So all those different activities we were doing throughout, we're doing that as a review, a little assessment here. And then we move into unit two. I'm gonna flip towards the end to unit six for us to look at real quick. 
Okay, so here we are with unit six, Dog Joy. Okay, in this unit, we're going to review hard and soft G. We're gonna talk about final D, G, E, and G, E. We're going to look at short and long vowels with final D, G, E, and G, E. We're going to review team and vowel R syllables with J. And we're going to talk about the Latin root ject. And we're going to elaborate sentences. Okay, so diving into hard and soft G. And again, you're gonna see we have a lot of these same types of activities. We have the phoneme substitution. We have words and with blends, words with soft G, adding words to our list. Okay, jaywalk, look at the vowel letter in the words below. Each word begins with the sound J, complete the words. Okay, so filling in based off of the rule, doing some speed reading, dictation. And we have questions over here to ask. Final D, G, E, and G, E. Okay, talking about the Vikings, again, really pulling in this etymology component here. We're gonna do some sorting, some more speed reading. Speed reading over here again. Spelling for final j, a quick sort. Some phoneme grapheme mapping over here. Dictation. Short and long vowel words with final d, g, e, and g, e. Okay, so you get the idea, this is really consistent with the activities that they're doing. This is pulling from a wide range of components. You have everything built into this program. Um, you know, I, in some ways I kind of wish my oldest student was a struggling speller so that we could do this with him. I have used this program with a lot of clients and they have had a lot of success in it. Okay, all these same kind of activities here. And then we have our review at the end. And then we have our book A review, so for the whole kind of book. We have our vowel valley chart and the consonant chart, and we have our glossary. So that is Spellography, the re-release of Spellography. If you found this video helpful, please go ahead and like and subscribe, and I will see y'all soon.